Well, howdy diddly dandy there, chums, tis I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, I want to talk a little bit about No Man's Sky and what I think is in store for the year 2025 when it comes to this brilliant game. So let's jump on over into game. Well, first up, chums, inside of the view of us is these teleporters that have been added to the actual spatial anomaly to get you up to that balcony that little bit quicker. And they bring you up here to Tethys, but also this giant droid. Now, this giant droid is a construct of the autophage. Now, at the moment, if you talk to this construct of the autophage, he just speaks a load of gibberish about shells and the crimson and occasionally the void mother. He doesn't do anything other than that. Now, we actually built him, constructed him, and then implanted echoes into him. I'm wondering if they are to introduce purple star systems, which is another thing that I think they may introduce in the new year, thanks to game file leaks. I'm wondering whether this droid is going to give us some missions to run inside of those purple systems, delving into the realm of glass to bring back echoes that perhaps he will decrypt and give us some sort of new shaders or new sorts of skins for ship customization or older ship parts of yesteryear. I kind of feel that that could be on the cards, people inside the view of us. So that's one of the things that I think is on the cards from going by what we can see inside of the spatial anomaly. Another thing that I think is on the cards is this person over here is Ariadne. Now, Ariadne, in the summer law of you know, yesteryear, probably about four years ago now, went missing. This is actually a doppelganger. This isn't the true Ariadne. Ariadne went missing between star systems into the void or realm of glass aboard a dark freighter never to be returned. What we have here is a clone or a doppelganger of Ariadne. Yes, I know. Looks kind of inconspicuous. Looks innocent, but no. This is a doppelganger, not the real Ariadne. So I kind of feel that they're going to give us a sort of story arc to do with Ariadne. And I'm hoping that we do go and rescue her. And so that's kind of what I think anyway, people. Right now I'm actually on an expedition console and I'm doing the reduxes. We're on the Omega sort of expedition, but I'm wondering whether this console here will allow us to run expeditions whenever we choose and in what order we wish to choose to run them. I'm wondering whether expeditions will be accessible from this terminal whenever we please and we can just run them. That's kind of what I'm hoping will happen with that actual console. That's where I'm hoping it moves to. That's pretty much everything that I've got for you when it comes to things with inside the Nexus. Other than perhaps the Nexus missions themselves, I'm hoping to get a little bit of an overhaul when it comes to multiplayer in the year 2025. Okay, John, so just to be clear, this is a predictions of what I think Hello Games will put in. I've actually done another video on my wish list for things that I hope that Hello Games put in. I'll put a link up there, go and hit that up to see my actual wish list, things I want to come in. So, abandoned space stations right now have no real rhyme or reason. The only real thing that you can do in abandoned stations that you can't do in any other station right now is they have the Atlas Pass level 3 doors and access to Remembrance Terminals, if you're lucky enough to come across one. I mean, I'd open this door here. Oh, it says that I haven't got the Atlas Pass Level 3. Of course I don't, because I'm inside of my Expedition safe. But anyway, behind those doors, you can get Remembrance Terminals, but that's the only thing in here that's slightly different. Now, these are covered in slime, they're all broken down, and all that sort of shenanigans as well. I'm wondering whether they might give us a bit more rhyme or reason to these abandoned stations, or do something else with them because at the moment they don't serve a great deal of purpose other than trying to find those Remembrance Terminals. Something I'm thinking they might do with abandoned systems or uncharted systems is let us chart them and then upload them. A little bit like the Utopia Expedition. I'm wondering whether there's going to be some sort of extra mechanics around planet survey and planet scanning maybe link it to the colossal archives it's something that i've mentioned more than once and done other videos on all about the colossal archives in fact if i can find a video i'll put it up there if you want to know more on that sort of idea now currently the station core has an option for a station override the only thing is is you can still get these station overrides from running certain pirate missions 
But when you're trying to input it, it just says glass, 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 counterfeit detected, blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't move on from there. Now, I'm wondering whether there's going to be some sort of link to the realm of glass. I mean, this kind of where the Sentinels come from or herald from, and then the Void Mother sits behind it. I'm wondering whether these station overrides are going to play a bigger part to the Void Mother storyline and maybe even access in that realm of glass. I mean, they have added motors and engines on the back of stations to make it look like they actually move through space. Who's to say that these engines aren't to move them through space and time? Maybe if you use a station override, it drops, jumps you, the whole station, with you and the ships and all of its NPCs in it, to an alternate dimension. Maybe one that's inhabited by the Autopage or the Atlantids. I'm wondering where we might even see a new race of the Atlantids. But yeah, if I fly around the back of this station, I'll show you what I mean. Boom. There you go. Engines in the rear. Yeah, they weren't there prior to the Orbital Expedition, an update, well, Orbital Update, the Expedition was a mega. But there we go, they've added in engines. Why would they add in engines unless they were serving some sort of purpose? On board your freighters, your actual freighter, Captain. Hello there, chappy. He has an option to engage the Singularity engine, but it says not installed. Unless you've done the Polestar Expedition, you may not have one. But the, that, that engine jumps you through a black hole. Black hole in time and space, yes. Who's to say it won't do more than that or jump you into the realm of glass? You may have noticed a little bit of a pattern with all of this, people. I have mentioned the realm of glass quite a lot. Now, the reason I've mentioned the realm of glass quite a lot is we've had four, well, we've had hints that there's going to be four parts of an ARG all linked around the realm of glass and the void mother we've had parts one two and three we haven't had the conclusion part of part four we also had worlds part one and we haven't had worlds part two so how would i roadmap this out if i was sean of the murrays well i think for arg part four to get its climax for the void mother to be realized we need to have purple systems added into the system and I think they're going to get delivered in Worlds Part 2. So I'm going to put it out there that I think that we're going to see Worlds Part 2 of February or March of 2025. Early part, first quarter of 2025, Worlds Part 2. Then I think we're probably going to get the Ariadne storyline. It could get delivered in as being an expedition or it could get delivered in as being an actual story arc, as an actual update. But then I think then on after that, we're probably going to get ARG part four, but delivered perhaps as the summer type update of the year. And I think that's going to be quite large. I think that's going to deliver in the Void Mother, perhaps even an Atlantid race inside of these purple systems. Not only that, I think we're going to see all those jellyfish creatures appear. In fact, they could appear in part one, in Worlds Part 2 at the start of the year. So I think first quarter, Worlds Part 2. I think mid to second quarter, perhaps the Ariadne storyline. Then I think we might get a couple of quality of life updates, a few other improvements. And then I think come August, September time for the big update of next year, it's going to be ARG part four, probably a little bit creepier, maybe even geared towards Halloween-y type stuff, but I'm hoping it comes out before then. I'm hoping it comes out summer, August time. And then I'm hoping we get a creepy sort of expedition around the Void Mother or doing raids or all sorts of stuff with the Autophage come the Halloween. That's what I'm hoping pans out in 2025. Do you think that has merit? Do you think that is tangible? Sound off in the comments, let us know. But that's that's pretty much all I've got for you. I mean, that, that's me crystal balling stuff. That's just sheer speculation. That's gut feeling. That's following patterns and loose ends inside of the game. I mean, each and every single one of these things that I've actually just mentioned, I feel has, you know, general merit because the breadcrumbs are already inside of game. They've already been pigeonholed. It's already there in a roundabout way. So I don't think it's in the realms of grandeur or speculation overhype. Honestly, I think all these things have a decent chance of becoming realized inside of the iteration, inside of the simulation. So anyway, sound up in the comments. Do you think this makes sense? I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye.
And goodbye again.